So yeah, the talk I uh, wanted to do today, it's about uh, Polynote and uh, yeah, more general about uh, what is a notebook. Uh, I had the idea to do this talk because yeah, two months ago I was speaking with some colleagues and they told me they never used a notebook before. And uh, yeah, I was a bit surprised because uh, I think I use, uh, I discovered it like four years ago. And since then I use them uh, almost every day. So yeah, this talk is not about how works a notebook, but more my experience about a notebook and why you should uh, try it. So yeah, I did a few slides, but uh, most of the talk will be on the notebook directly. It will be more interesting. So yeah, the first slide will be to present uh, what is a notebook and uh, for me, what is the benefit to use a notebook. And uh, after I will present Polynote, that is a solution made by Netflix uh, last year. It was made open source. And uh, yeah, I want to show you why I switched to Polynote because before I was using another solution and uh, why you should use it with uh, Scala. And uh, yeah, in conclusion, I will uh, present you the other solution I was using uh, before called uh, Jupyter and uh, why for me Polynote is uh, better. So yeah, and yeah, if you have questions, don't hesitate to stop me. So yeah, the first slide. Uh, so I took this sentence from the Wikipedia of Jupyter that is a main solution for notebook. And yeah, for me to summarize well, uh, why I like Notebook and why I use it. So support interactive data science and scientific computing across all programming languages. So for me, the most important word are interactive because yeah, a notebook should be a solution that you can easily install and easily start a new notebook if you want to, yeah, if you want to create something quickly. And uh, by all programming languages, I mean, uh, like when you are doing a notebook, it's more to create your ID and to experiment. It's not to have a hyper optimized solution that is working in all the cases. So yeah, you don't care if you are using Python and Scala. You just want to have your result quickly and to have a tool uh, with everything inside. So yeah. So yeah, for uh, the one who never see a notebook, that is the interface of uh, Polynote. So I took Polynode, but it will be the same if you are in Jupyter, most of the components are always the same. So the, in the top, you will always have the, all the button to activate your cell or all these things, but I will show you after. Uh, after that, you have the main part. So in this part, you can mix uh, in Polynode uh, multiple language, but I will come back on this. And yeah, you can mix Markdown and code. So it's very convenient. For example, uh, yeah, I was using it during my school. And uh, to put the exercise, you can put everything in Markdown and after the code to run in the cell. And uh, yeah, most of the time you have a navigator to go through your file. So yeah, the general concept. So yeah, I won't explain how it works uh, into detail, but uh, in general, you have always uh, two parts. Uh, on the left, the web interface. So you will write your Markdown, your Scala, your Python, whatever. And uh, on the right, the kernel will, will uh, run your code. So basically, you always have a server. You run your code, and uh, the web interface will send the code to the kernel. The code will be interpreted, and uh, the result will be sent back. Uh, yeah, I think. Do you have questions for the moment? So yeah, my first experience with notebook was uh, during my master in IT. It was in a Polytech North in France. And uh, yeah, for our teacher, it was really convenient when we were uh, learning Python because they just had to create a notebook to copy it and to uh, give it to all the students. We had all the instructions inside. So yeah, when you are one teacher for 30 students, it's really convenient for this kind of tool. And uh, my use case, in my case, I have uh, three different use case. Yeah, the first one, it was uh, during my internship. I was working uh, in a research project for uh, Xavier. Uh, not for Xavier, but uh, with uh, Xavier. And yeah, as you know, Xavier is living in Belgium. So it was hard 
to work together through the same code, and we choose to use uh, Jupyter. Uh, yeah, just a minute, someone is uh, knocking at my door and come back. Xavier lives where? We have a short interlude now. <laughs> yeah, sorry. So, yeah, the first one was an internship uh, with Xavier. So he was uh, working from Belgium and I was working from uh, Rotterdam. And yeah, it was really convenient because in a notebook, you can run all the code. You can save the result and send the notebook like this with all the result. And yeah, we were doing a TensorFlow Scala. So some cell can take like one hour to run. So for Xavier, he just had to open the notebook and check uh, all the results. Uh, after, yeah, I take the ID for uh, the workshop we did uh, with uh, Xavier again. So I take the ID from my school and uh, I made, uh, yeah, we made some notebook with all the exercise, as I said before. And uh, yeah, I use it uh, almost every day. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, as I said before, a notebook should be easy to install. So basically on the right, you have the code to run all the Jupyter with a Scala kernel. It's a Docker file. So you have everything here. And otherwise, if you use it every day, it's better to install it uh, locally. But I will show you after. So yeah, now we see what is the uh, notebook will go more into detail with Polynote because, uh, yes, that's the subject for today. So Polynote has a different uh, feature. The first one is uh, Polynote is made for Scala. So you will have a lot of support compared to Jupyter. And uh, it's polyglot. So that means you can use Python, Scala, whatever in the same uh, notebook. But I will show you. Yeah. No. So yeah. So the first thing to do is to install Polynote. For the moment, you can do a brew install. You have to download the jar and after to extract it. And uh, yeah, after once it's extracted, you just go in the repo, you do the pip install, and you are ready to go. So yeah, I will show you the different uh, interface just to give you a small abstract to what exists. So on the left, you have Polynote, and on the right, you have Jupyter. So yeah, I won't go into detail into Jupyter because that's not the subject, but just to show you, you have like, you can run Scala code, but you have uh, no code editing, you have no fake, no autocomplete. So it's like a really basic, like a text file. But yeah, otherwise, so it works. Like this. Uh, yeah, it's not only for code. I also this notebook. Uh, for example, you can run SQL command. So basically, you can find a notebook for almost every language. So you can find a notebook for your favorite language. I think I have the list somewhere. Let me, yeah. So yeah, we'll give you this slide after. But for example, here it's all the kernel available for Jupyter. So. You just have to choose the kernel corresponding to your language and you are ready to go. And yeah, and so everything in install, you run the command and you have the web interface running. So yeah, now we'll go back in Polynote. So the first thing to do is yeah, to present you the interface. So in Polynote, it's quite simple for the moment. We, yeah, it's a beta project. It was made last year. So if you use it, uh, be aware there is still a lot of bug inside. But uh, it's quite functional uh, if you want to do it uh, okay. So yeah, I can go through the option first. You have a few options, but they are important. For example, you can pass in dark term, or if you are a Vim user, you can activate the Vim input. So that can be interesting. You have uh, all the shortcuts to use to run your cell, but yeah, it's uh, the same action than the button here. Here you have your version, it's not really important and the running kernel for the moment I have nothing. So here I have the navigator to see the file, we'll go in the first one. 
So yeah, basically my goal is not to show you some art thing, but just to show you how to use the notebook. And after you will be able to experiment by yourself. So yeah, as you can see, we can start with some markdown. So you don't have uh, to edit the markdown uh, as a raw file, but you have a WYSIWYG editor here. So that's quite nice because in uh, Jupyter, you have to do like real markdown like uh, this if you want. Uh, after, for every cell, you can, so because it's polynote, you can mix all the language in the same file. So every cell can be one of this type, it can be text, Python, Scala, SQL, I never use it, so I won't speak about it, and Vega spec to plot. So, yeah. so you can also write some LaTeX because yeah, we don't have to forget notebook initially is made for uh, data science. So they use uh, LaTeX for all the mathematic formula. So you have a nice editor to, yeah, if I click here, I can see my formula and I can uh, edit it in real and see the result here that will be print. So this is quite nice. And yeah, at the moment you want to start your first uh, code, you have to run the kernel to communicate with, uh, to evaluate your result. So we just have to do that. And for the moment, the kernel will just be waiting. It won't run anything. If we go here, yeah, we see it's not busy, it's just waiting. So yeah, the first uh, language you can run, it's a uh, Vega spec. So I don't know if you already use it, but it's uh, to plot some data. Uh, on my side, I never use it to be honest. So I just copy paste an example to show you what you can do. So for example, it's uh, here you can plot your data and check if everything is okay. I put some fake data, but here you can read the data from Spark and plot it directly like this. Uh, something important uh, in Polynote, you have uh, the symbol table. So all the variables defined in your cell will appear here. And for the moment, I just have a Spark session because yeah, I activate Spark for this notebook. So yeah, we will go in Python now. So this cell is activated as Python. It will take a bit of time, the time you install all the dependency. And yeah, we can see it runs the cell, so you will always have the code below. If you want, you can hide it. And uh, yeah, for the moment, it's quite simple. And we see the variable is that I defined here. And yeah, another, uh, I will show you a lot of small features, so don't hesitate to stop. And yeah, uh, something very nice in Polynote to have uh, some organized notebook is that uh, order is important. That means if you define a variable here, for example, you will see it's defined here. You can see there's a value. And if I go back to a cell above this one, the variable will disappear. So yeah, this uh, thing will adapt in function of where you are in the file to know all the variables defined. And honestly, it was quite nice because for example, I can show you in Jupyter. Yeah. So if I define my x equals zero and in cell above I run it, there is no problem for him. Uh, the variable is defined in the notebook, so in the general context. So it's a small feature, but uh, when you have big notebook and it's quite useful to organize your code. Uh, yeah, after just to show you that uh, another thing that uh, organize a notebook very well, all the dependencies are defined here. So basically, you just have to define your pip dependency or your Scala dependency, and that's it. Every after the kernel will download it and made it available in the notebook. And you, yeah, if you are not satisfied with this, you can run some custom dependency, and everything is here. Because yeah, again, if I take the example of uh, Jupyter, because uh, I was using this solution before I switch, you have to define this in a cell like a uh, code like this. So it's not very organized. You can have some dependence in the middle of the notebook, etc. So here, at least, you have everything here, and everything is handled by uh, the kernel. Uh, yeah, I should have done that. Okay. So yeah, I show that I add panda here, and now I can uh, run this. Yeah, the kernel restarted. So take a bit of time. And if you want, uh, for example, you are used, uh, I know in our team we are used to use pp print in Scala. 
you can define in the configuration file some uh, default dependency and they will be added in every new notebook. So that's nice if you want to save some time too. Uh, yeah, after uh, Polynote is made for data science, so you have some support for a data frame in Panda in Python and in Scala for a Spark data frame. So you have this small icon here. First, you can see uh, the schema of your object. And here you can go deep. You can yeah, basically analyze all your data. So here it's quite simple, but you can see all the record. You have this when you have a big table, it's nice, but yeah, it's some small function. You can do a plot directly. And it's uh, some small functionality, but when you have big data and you just want to see if your uh, script work fine, if, uh, for example, the value was updated fine, you can click on this icon and check everything directly. So yeah, that's it for Python. Now I will uh, go in Scala. So as you can see, we are still in the same notebook. So there is no problem. And yeah, here, I did not mention, but we see the Python objects appear also in this table. They are wrapped into these things, but it's not important the real type is here. And that uh, you don't need to click in this icon for every variable you can uh, access the value directly from uh, this table. So yeah, it's very nice to keep organized inside your notebook. So yeah, here also for case class, they have a nice uh, way to show it. If you want to do some diff, et cetera, it's uh, very convenient. And yeah, for the list, you have the same uh, mechanism where you, you can analyze all your data. Uh, so yeah, after, uh, yeah, to be honest, I never use Spark, but I just installed it yesterday to show you that that works in uh, Polynote too. So we are still in the same notebook. The only thing to do to activate Spark is to put this configuration uh, thing on the top of the file because by default uh, Polynote will uh, disable Spark in uh, all the notebook. So here I can uh, I have a CSV on my uh, locally and I can read it uh, as a, if I was using Spark like this. So yeah, the main thing I want to show you through this notebook is that whatever ID you have, you can experiment very fast with uh, Polynote or Jupyter or whatever solution. And you have a notebook for every language. So yeah, if you want to experiment and dig it through your data, it's really convenient. So yeah, they have a support for uh, Spark data frames. They can show it, so this is made by Spark. But otherwise you still have a nice interface with all the schema. You can go to all your data as if you were in Excel, for example, and plot the data, so yeah. And it's really convenient. The plot data, we just uh, generate some Vega code uh, as I show you at the top of the notebook. So yeah, here it was just to create a data frame. And yeah, the cool thing too, it's uh, you can use Scala and you can use Python in the same notebook, but you can also communicate through Scala and Python. So for example, they have a good support for, uh, yeah, for the conversion from Spark data frame to Panda data frame. And yeah, for example, here we just have uh, I don't know, yeah, the variable data defined here, and we can use it in Python if, uh, if it was a uh, Python variable. And yeah, I know it's a lot of small features, but yeah, I wanted to show you everything. The other uh, cool thing I saw, it's uh, when you have a big block of code and some parts are blocking, Polynote will uh, highlight the code running for the moment. So, if you have a big function and you want to see what is blocking, it can be helpful. And yeah, if we can check here in the context, we have all the variables in the bottom. And if I go back in the top, everything is appearing as the context is uh, updated. So yeah, I have another notebook to show you, but uh, do you have some question before? Maybe some points in this notebook or something you want to test? Yeah, I've got a question if you have a sec. Yeah. Uh, so two, maybe two questions or a couple of questions. If you you had an example where you had a case class bar uh, defined in Scala, and you're talking a little bit about the interop between uh, like passing variables and stuff to uh, Python and Scala and vice versa. What happens, mm -hmm. for example, if you want to access val bar in Python and you're referencing a case class or something like how? 
how, how does that work under the hood? It's nice because uh, in the next notebook, uh, it's uh, the thing I want to show you. I have a ah, okay. case in Scala and I want to convert it in Python, but I won't go okay. in all the code. I want you just to show you this part. So yeah, we'll answer. Okay, the stuff. cool. I'll, I'll wait then. Okay. No, no one else? Um, so okay. this is a... Uh, we'll, uh, show you this one quickly. I won't go into all the code because yeah, it will be not interesting. So yeah, we are in a new notebook, so I have to start the new kernel. If I want uh, from here, I can kill the other one or access the notebook. So yeah, it feels very organized again compared to the other solution, and it's what I like in uh, Polynote. So yeah, uh, yeah, maybe I didn't explain the button. So this one will allow you to run all the cell. So if you are not in a demo, you would just want the result. It's uh, convenient. This one is to have a backup. This one to hide all the results because every time you run a cell, you will have a, if I put this, for example, I will have that. So it's convenient to hide all the output in one time. Uh, after to choose the language, add a cell below or above and delete a cell. And yeah, after that, uh, it's not. So yeah, the goal of uh, this notebook was just to access an API uh, in Scala, uh, having uh, to have all the data in a case class and uh, communicate with Python, transform this case class in a Python case class. So yeah, I won't explain all the code. Yeah, something nice too, here I have the API key to communicate and you can hide some code. If you don't want uh, during your talk to show some sensible information, you can do it with this button. So yeah. so yeah, here we have our case class. So weather data, and I have two apply method, one to extract the value from JSON and one from Python object. So as you can see, if you have a data class uh, in Python, I will show you the code after, you can access the field like you, you, will, you will do, uh, you just have to specify the type when you go from Python to Scala. So yeah. Here I call the API. We saw that it's highlighting because it's blocking. Yep, we have the result. And yeah, here we arrive. So the current variable, it's called data. And it's just a list. Uh, yeah, you have to use the Java list, not the Scala list when you use, uh, when you go to Python. And whether data, it's uh, our case class. So. I run the import and here, so our Scala variable, uh, I think we can inspect the data. It's not nice. Eh? So here I, in Python, I can access it directly. For example, the first element of the list and yeah, I want the field timestamp. So you will have a getter for every field you define in your case class. So here's the timestamp. You just have to use the same as with parentheses. So yeah, it works. And we can do the same uh, thing in uh, Python. We can have a data class with exactly the same uh, schema. And after, uh, yeah, it's not uh, really beautiful, but uh, as I said, we just want to experiment and arrive to our results. So you can convert your uh, Scala data class like this. So for every uh, data class, I access all the feed like an applying method. And you can see it works uh, fine and you can do, so for example, a use case to use Scala and Python uh, in the same time will be to do all the thing with the Scala to transform the data. And after I know a lot of people are, uh, feel confident with uh, matplotlib to plot the data. So you can have your data in Scala and just pass it in Python to plot everything and be sure uh, everything is as expected. So yeah, I won't go into detail, but all the code will be available if you want to go back uh, more into detail. So here I just uh, print all the variable I extract from the API. And yeah, it was in Scala initially, we transform it in Python without any problem. And of course we can go back in the other way. So here it's uh, the Python object. And here in Scala, we can access this. And yeah, I show you the plan method to transform the Python object to a case class. And it works uh, as expected also. 
So yeah, it's quite, uh, I don't, I will not say I use uh, this uh, polyglot feature every day because that's not true. I use, uh, yeah, most of the time polynode for Scala, but uh, it can be convenient uh, if you want to use, uh, yeah, for example, TensorFlow in Python will be more convenient and uh, Spark to handle the data and modify it will be more convenient also for me. So I would use it uh, in this context, for example. So yeah, I will go back to the slide. So yeah, just a quick comparison because I didn't speak a lot about Jupyter, but Jupyter is like the, not the older, but uh, the most famous solution for notebook. So if you want something stable and uh, with a big community, I advise you to use Jupyter. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, you have less feature if you want to do Scala, but in the same time in Jupyter, it's very customizable. You can uh, download some extension and add it to your, uh, yeah, to your instance and uh, you have a lot of languages. The page I show you is all the kernel are for uh, Jupyter. In Polynode for the moment, it's not possible to add languages. But uh, yeah, in the other side, in Polynode, you have a first class Scala support. So if you want to do Scala, for sure, I will go uh, to Polynode. You have the code editing, so autocomplete, for example. They are uh, currently implementing jump to definition, so it will be very nice when your code is spread across the notebook. The text editing, it's not, uh, yeah, it's not really useful if you know Markdown, but it's uh, still nice to have this. The multi-language support uh, in the same notebook. And yeah, they, they define this point, the runtime insight. So the error in Polynote, I have the impression they are a bit more clear than uh, in Jupyter. And I feel they explain because everything is wrote uh, in Scala for Polynote. So, um, so yeah, in conclusion, I advise you to try it because yeah, this talk was just an introduction and to show you just uh, how to run a cell or to have your notebook. But the best thing to do with notebook is to try it by yourself. It's quite simple. For example, if you want to try Jupyter, it just uh, pip install Jupyter and uh, you are good to go. And uh, yeah, with Polynode, you have to extract the jar. And uh, yeah, I think uh, almost yeah, almost every language are supported uh, with Jupyter and the uh, custom kernel. And yeah, for me, the two main points of uh, using a notebook is for collaborative. So if you want to work uh, in a code uh, for workshop or to prepare a presentation with your colleague, for example, it's really good. In Polynote, you can work in the same notebook and you have the feature like Google Drive where uh, if someone is editing a code, it will be highlighting at the window of the other user. So yeah, it's really convenient and you can put some comment like uh, from Google Docs. And yeah, first iteration because basically you just put your dependency, you start the kernel and you are good to go to start writing some code. So yeah, thanks for listening. I'm open for question now. Vincent, what language is this uh, written in? Have you any idea or languages? Uh, what, sorry? What what is this uh, yeah. polynote in what language is it developed or what what is it so, uh, in Scala and uh, almost yeah, most of the code is uh, using ZIO. Okay. But uh, yeah, to be honest, I uh, didn't start to contribute to it, so I don't know exactly the core of polynote. Ah, cool. Very nice. Uh, I have a question about like completions and stuff. What, what yeah. like for yeah. Scala, for example, or maybe Python as well, but more interested, I guess, in the Scala part of it. Like, what what actually powers the completions? Like, uh, is it actually using like the Scala presentation compiler, or like what? Yeah, like where? What what's powering the completions and stuff? Honestly, yeah, I don't know because yeah, I don't know exactly how it works. Uh, it's internally, but it's uh, for the moment it's quite limited. For example. Uh, can show you yeah, yeah. for the common function you will have uh, the auto completion like this but uh, for some libraries that you will import uh, the auto completion will be missing so for yeah it's still in beta for the moment uh, yeah, you don't have a lot of feature but uh, i'm not able to say how it works uh, yeah, internally then the, the other question I had was like the, the, again, another question about like the, like going from case classes in Scala, for example, or yeah. data type in uh, Python, 
uh, they were both like uh, being turned into JSON, it looked like. So then uh, do you know, like, is there some type of like shared AST in between there? Or is JSON just like this intermediary step that everything goes to? Uh, or then does it get like serialized or? It's not uh, transforming in JSON, it's uh, using JEP. So yeah, it will, uh, JEP is already know to convert the kind of like this from Python to the Java one. And uh, yeah, again, uh, I don't know how JEP works uh, internally, but uh, in Polynodes, you have a full, uh, uh, you have a documentation about that. Ah, okay. But uh, for sure, it's not serialized into JSON, it's more efficient uh, than that. Okay, cool, thanks. Mm. Do you think we should, uh, should we host one centrally for Lunatech usage? Does that make sense? Or is it really you host one if you do a project with somebody? What's, uh, I one? saw for Polynet for the moment, they advise uh, us to don't use it uh, like in a shared way because it's not a uh, very secure, the web interface. And yeah, it's, uh, I don't remember where, where in the documentation page, they say to only use uh, it uh, locally for the moment. Okay. So more for a personal use. And, uh, yeah. But for that, yeah, we can, uh, for Jupyter, for sure, you have a lot of solution to host uh, a lot of notebook like this as a company level. Uh, I have a question. Yep. So um, how do we use uh, Zeppelin notebooks? Is that is that something something else or is that Jupyter? You know? uh, it's, uh, I think it's the main concurrent of uh, Jupyter. But uh, no, it's uh, in the spirit is the same thing. It's a notebook where you can. Uh, and, and do you uh, think this could yeah. replace that at some point, or is, is that a long way off, or is that a different goal or something? Uh, what can replace Zeppelin can replace Jupiter or Polynode? Uh, uh, Polynode can replace Jupiter at some point. Do you think? Honestly, I don't think so because. The ecosystem of Jupyter is really, really big. You have a lot of things. You have, like, for example, Jupyter Collab to have your notebook online uh, on the cloud. And uh, yeah, for me, at the beginning, it's more for data analysis. And most of the people working on this field are using Python. And if you compare Polynote and Jupyter uh, for Python, I think it's better to use uh, Jupyter if you plan to use only Python. And as uh, many data scientific use Python, I think Polynote will never replace it. Yeah. But yeah. On the other hand, Polynote is only one year, uh, only one year since it was created? Yeah, but no, I think it's uh, since longer uh, in, in Netflix, but they open source it uh, last year. Ah, okay. But yeah, I saw a talk where they start working like two or three people on it. And no, yeah, it's a big project for Netflix. And yeah, if you want to contribute, uh, it's a fully open source. 